So I had uh, lost steps on this controller. I upgraded from the parallel to the USB and ended up with lost steps. This is the solution. I'll demonstrate it in a minute, but I want to go through different languages in case there's people from other countries having the same problem. Maybe they can benefit if Google translated it well enough. And if I can get a good enough um, verification on the uh, screen without it getting glare or anything. But that's what I'm going to go through there and there. All right. So <clears throat> the conclusion, I'll just jump to that in case you don't want to listen to the rest of it, is that when you program the P and D of the different axes, they go to, when they, they come out of here, like X, Y, Z, and A, they can hook into either the positives or the negatives. And then you would, if let's just say like the way I originally had it, I had these coming out and I had these hooked to the negatives the negative pulse, the negative direction. And then what I did was I tied the, the positives together and ran it out to the five volts here. And that's what caused the problems. And what I did was I just switched them from the uh, negatives. I, t I took the output of these, I put them on the positives. And then I tied the negatives together and ran the negatives to the ground. That fixed it. So that's what happened in a nutshell. Now I'll go through some more um, detail. My first, uh, when I first started having problems, it was random. And um, the way I started checking it is I put a, a mark at the top of my coupling nut on uh, all three well, all three of the, the X and Ys. Well, I did, I did it on the Z also. I put a little mark on there. I don't have a C through here, so ended up putting it on the, on the screw. But um, that allowed me to start at a, a zero, zero spo a point. Let me go to uh, Mach 3. So I would set zero, zero, and my program has a 400, uh, my my Aspire puts everything 400 up for my reference plane. But then I would send it off on a program over here and it would do um, a three-dimensional three cut in the air. I'd have the spindle turned off. So I'd have it running in the air. And when it was done, it would go back to, to, to Z, uh, X, Y, Z, X, Y, zero, zero, and Z plus four. And then I could look and see, and this one usually ended up after I did the, I'm sorry, when I was still random, when it was still random, it could be anywhere. But that's how I checked it. If it wasn't straight up and down, I knew something was up. So that was an easy way to um, visually reference without me uh, any measuring tools. So once I uh, did those, you know, figured out how to test it, I thought, well, it's probably static on the line, noise on the line. So I, I put, uh, let me put this light on here. I don't know if that's helping much. Well, anyway, the, the board used to be right here, the red board. And my, my top folds down it's got a hinge right there and there's a hinge on the bottom you can see it comes up the top comes down the same exact way so you can see that there's not much room under here where the board was so it's kind of close to the power supplies so i thought well i'll move that and i did i moved it under here just to get it away from everything and so I relocated that 
and I relocated some power lines. Maybe this will be better without this. Uh, the power lines coming back here. I got a, a 120 coming into uh, this breaker here, and I've got a 240 coming into. Um, I should be careful. Those are live, I think. Um, that's a breaker back there. I think they're both 20 amp, if I remember right. Anyway, they used to come up front here on this front panel, and that had had easier access. But the 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 high voltage wires ran through the, through this and caused some problems. Originally, uh, my spindle was cutting out in the middle of the program randomly, and it, once I rerouted some wires, it that fixed that. So this time I completely cut out the 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 high voltage lines, the AC, and just have them coming in in the back. So all that's back there. I mean, these power supplies are kind of close, but yeah, it seems to be working now. And and I I shielded and grounded the shielding to all of my data lines from from the P&D and also for my I have hybrid motors so th they have um, um, what do you call them? encoders so those encoder lines are grounded also and so I did all that rewiring oh and I put a bunch of RF chokes everywhere just why not I don't know how much good they did if any good at all but they, I'm sure they don't hurt anything so I did that and the result was that that uh, the randomness was fixed, but I still had a step loss. And from then then on, when I'd come back to zero, this this one was pretty much always pretty close. It might slightly drift off to the right, and this one would be quite a bit off. It might be over here, say about ten or fifteen thousandths on on movement. Um, the reason you can tell that is you have five millimeter pitch on the screw. So one complete turn is almost 200 thousandths. So half a turn is a hundred thousandths. Quarter turn is uh, 50 thousandths. 45 degrees is going to give you 25 thousandths. So somewhere in here, you know, 10, 15 thousandths is what it was moving after about an hour or two of 3d moves. I also found out that if I set the, the, um, pulse per revolution if originally i had it set at a thousand because my uh encoders are a thousand count encoders so i matched it up here uh, but i noticed that if i brought up the resolution it made uh it made the problem sort of try to go away a little bit it was still there but it wasn't wasn't as bad so then i went to the default went only to 400 you can see this goes um 1600 half of that is 800 half of that is 400 so at 400 it was the error was really bad so i started testing everything at 400 because that was going to show up better uh what do we got next i tried uh, i tried all kinds of things i tried the to lower the acceleration um, I tried, um, different pulse rates and like I just said, they made it a difference. Uh, let's go to the next page. I tried swapping things out. Like I, I would swap, this is the, the Y and this is the A. So I'd pull everything loose and then trade, um, drivers to see if it made a difference. I don't think, I don't nothing nothing made a difference I, I swapped the drivers i swapped out a motor like i put this motor on here that didn't fix it i had two of these so i put a different one this is the one that was in there so i put this other one on there that didn't fix it just try to swapping stuff out nothing really worked uh i tried different kernel speed uh as far as the kernel speed goes what I found out with that, just a side note, it's kind of important. The units per minute feedback that would tell you how fast it was going, like feed rate, was always in an error. 
if I had my kernel speed above 25,000, 25 kilohertz. Let me show you what I mean there. Ports and pins. <clears throat> the, um, the kernel speed here. If I run it up at any of these other um, frequencies, then you could program 30 inches a minute, for example. And this units per minute will show, it could show 150, 200. You know, it's, it's inaccurate. But if you put on 25 kilohertz and you program 30, 30 inches a minute, it will show from zero to 30 accurately. So I'm running at 25. Hopefully that works. So that's a side note on that. And then, uh, let's see what else we got. Well, that's basically it. Like I said, uh, I tried different things and re read several posts and like on cnczone.com. And one guy, very, very few people had the problem. And anytime somebody did have the problem, it seemed like the answers were, oh, you've got a grounding problem or you've got shielding problem, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I did find one post where the guy described the same thing that was, it was accumulating. It was always consistently accumulating. Um, and, and he mentioned that at lower, lower baud rates, it would, um, it would, uh, be worse. So in that post, a guy said, well, have you tried reversing the polarity on your P and D outputs? And that's what I finally tried, and it was just magic. It worked. So that's really the, the whole thing. I was going to show you about um, the uh, um, motor tuning aspect of what I was working on with this thing. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. I'll turn the motors on. So I got these fans because these these two are sold as a set and this doesn't have an amp um, amp adjustment just frequency it does allow um, switch six will let you know use the encoder or, or actually no encoder for on and, and if you switch it off it gives you the encoder it's kind of like the opposite and I guess it's, this is the, for the opposite direction. It does give you that, but there's no amp settings on this thing. It's just frequency. Anyway, this gives you the six, six amp maximum, and these motors are 5.8 phase current. So these things run really, really, really hot. More hotter than I would, uh, I would like to cut them down, cut the amperage down to four or five amps, but I put these fans on here because I think I can probably get the, the Ethernet cable and all that software, um, firmware stuff. I don't want to deal with it. Fans work. So, I, you know, I've got a fan on all the motors and, and I'm using 24 volt fans and I'm using a 24 volt um, um, on this, this bank here. So I just, it all... It all works. What was I going to? Oh, I was going to show you the the motor movement. So that's where I've got it set. Let me go back home with this thing. Um. That's where I've got the acceleration set right now. And if I go to motor tuning, you can see that it's pretty quick. If you see from zero to full, it's just over 0.1 second. It's 1.2, or 0.12. Um, that's a pretty high acceleration rate, 14. That's another thing on, on these settings. The higher you go on these pulses, Right here, the higher the higher you go, the slower Mach 3 will force you to go. Like right now, I'm on 10,000 steps on the on the driver, which is 50,800 here per per revolution uh, per unit. I'm not sure. I can't remember. 
um, per revolution, I think. And then um, if I program 200 here, it would just default back down to 100. It won't go any faster. And if I if I go to uh, let's say I went to 40,000 on here, well that's going to be um, you know four times. It'll be like 20,000 or 200,000. I mean um, steps here, but it 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 forces like uh 20 20 000 or 20 000, 20 inches a minute it won't let you go more than 20 inches a minute so you have to compromise on that or as far as i know anyway maybe i'm wrong but that's how i that's how i've said it and that's all i know about anyway i've noticed that if you have a slow ramp so it takes longer if you if it took takes longer to get up there which you know smaller motors you would have to let it ramp up slower um I, sh I should be able to get away with this because i have large motors but if you do it in a slow one like i'm going to go ahead and set it for um uh one let's say and save that and now you can see it's going to take uh, one point one five eight seconds. So still under two seconds, but really slow ramp. I'll show you something that happens with this. You see that little that jump at the end? So I didn't like that. That's why I have my acceleration uh, pretty steep ramp there. I'm running it at 14. Just save that. Still has like a thump at the end, but it's just because it's stopping so quickly, I think. Anyway, I like it better like that than the other way. And so anyway, I spent a month trying to figure this out, trying swapping things, and every test took at least two hours to, to get it to show some error. So it was a pretty slow ordeal, and I didn't write things down like I should have, and so I'd forget what I was doing. After I'd get busy on something else. I spent a month trying to going down rabbit holes thinking oh this is what the problem is and um no nope. all i all i had to do was this in the end and that's what i did for a month